was an extremely well-designed clinical trial done at the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. Uh, by a team that also included researchers from Stanford and Vanderbilt and Italy, and they used very sophisticated testing for memory and learning to show, to generate data which indicated that phosphatidylserine, taking phosphatidylserine uh, could actually improve the functional age of the aging brain. So a person who was testing by these sophisticated um, psychometric tests, sophisticated psychometric methods, uh, a person who was testing at, say, age 70 in comparison to their peers, after taking phosphatidylserine at 300 milligrams for three months, uh, could test at the age of 58. Or a person who was testing at the age of 85 might go back to testing at the age of 73. So this um, highly competent group of researchers published in a prestigious journal, Neurology, um, literally the words that P.S. phosphatidylserine can turn back the clock on aging. So let's take a quick look at how P.S. can revitalize the brain. P.S. can improve the brain's energy production, which is crucial for its billions of nerve cells that happen to be the body's largest and most energy consuming cells. The human brain needs a lot of energy to function. Essentially, you may have heard this elsewhere, um, at least 20% of the body's energy at rest, and perhaps as much as 50% of the body's energy when it's working. And PET imaging can be used to measure a brain's energy generation from looking at its consumption of blood glucose, labeled blood glucose. The blue and green in the upper PET scan indicates low energy generation in this elderly, in this elderly woman's brain. The yellow and red in the lower PET scan indicates greatly increased energy generation in her brain after taking PS for three weeks. So by energizing the brain, by improving the brain's ability to make energy and provide that energy uh, or to, to utilize that energy for electrical connectivity, information, um, integration, and all of that, PS is a foundational nutrient for the human brain. Give us a little bit of a breakdown in a way that is not too academic, but a little bit easier to understand for us longevity enthusiasts, how phosphatidylserine truly gets into, it gets into action in a way that is meaningful and evokes those fantastic results. How phosphatidylserine or PS works uh, is very interesting. And it works at such a foundational level in our cells, that basic action has ramifications for practically all of our life processes. Uh, the key to the power of phosphatidylserine is that it's an essential cell membrane building. Practically all of our life processes depend on our cell membranes. Without phosphatidylserine, our cell membranes can't function. To, to sort of help you to get oriented, let's look at the illustration of a generalized animal cell and the membrane systems that make it up. So let's take a look at this illustration. Um, cell membranes are continuous sheets of molecules that are highly metabolically active. All of our cells have an outer membrane which is a living boundary between the outer environment and the cell's living contents. And the activity of the, of the enzymes and other proteins in that outer membrane actually define, define the chemical character of the interior of the cell. So the membrane is, is if you will, um, um, uh, a, a regulator 
of the cell's internal environment. So built into the outer membrane are sensory enzymes, enzymes that transport nutrients into the cell, other enzymes that export molecules the cell has made um, to travel to the rest of the body, enzymes that send signals out to the rest of the body, and enzymes for numerous other functions that manage our life processes. The expanded view of the outer membrane at the lower right reveals a continuous double layer of molecules which represent the phospholipids that include phosphatidylserine. Now, within the cell are other sets of membranes that create unique functional compartments, all of those containing phosphatidylserine and each of them containing specialized sets of enzymes, enzymes that are specialized for the functioning of that particular compartment. So for example, the mitochondrial membranes seen in brown generate energy. The double membranes of the nucleus seen in blue manage the DNA and the genes and the chromosomes and the proteins that regulate these um, genetic um, um, structures. Every function of our cells is linked to membranes. And in all of our cells, every type of membrane must contain phosphatidylserine in order to function properly. Do we know in the realm of research if there's any data on how much phosphatidylserine declines with age? There is another urban legend about phosphatidylserine, which is that it declines with age. Its content in our cells declines with age. That is a that is a, a, a terrible misunderstanding of, first of all, what is measured in the brain, but also what, what PS does and how important it is for our cells. In terms of its content in our cells, it does not decline in age. Now, if you're looking at a brain that, if you're looking at an autopsy, an autopsy brain that um, comes from a person who has had pretty serious memory decline, the brain itself can be smaller because the brain has lost nerve cells and lost nerve cell connections. And in that way, if you would measure the amount of PS in the whole brain, you'd see less. But you'd also see a lot fewer cells and a lot fewer connections. So, so PS is so important that it is concentrated, it is most concentrated in the membranes of our nerve cells. And especially at the synapses, the connecting points between nerve cells. Um, so at the synapses, the connecting points, phosphatidylserine is absolutely required for chemical messengers to be released, to be released from the upstream nerve cell and then travel across the gap to the downstream nerve cell. The chemical transmitters, whatever they are, acetylcholine, um, serotonin, dopamine, uh, whatever you'd want to consider, are packaged in little bags of membranes. And in order for those bags to be released and release the transmitters, phosphatidylserine is required. So without phosphatidylserine, there would not be electrical activity in the brain. There would not be chemical transmission activity in the brain, chemical messenger transmission activity. So um, the relative ratios of PS in the existing healthy tissue don't change. However, having said that, I can easily envisage a scenario in which, um, and, and some of the clinical data imply this, when the brain is fading, when the brain is losing function and losing connections, giving PS is a means to actually facilitate rebuilding connections. And there is animal experimental work that suggests that giving the animal PS can cause the animal, the brain of the animal to make more of a growth factor called nerve growth factor which actually stimulates nerve cells to repair and maintain and make new connections. So phosphatidylserine then may well be 
a regenerative factor at the level of the individual nerve cell and the individual connections among the trillions of connections that we have in our functioning brain. The best uh, mechanism of action that I can suggest for phosphatidylserine improving memory is that it's absolutely essential for our nerve cells to communicate with each other. Phosphatidylserine is required. It's concentrated at the synapses uh, where nerve cells meet each other. So we have around 86 billion nerve cells, and each of those makes at least a thousand connections with other nerve cells. So we have literally trillions of connections, uh, more than the stars that we can see in the universe. And each of those connections requires having PS concentrated where the packages of chemical transmitters are going to be released. And PS is also required downstream where there are big proteins that respond to those chemical messengers. So on both sides of the synapse, phosphatidylserine or PS is absolutely required for that process of chemical transmission and electrical activation to work. And um, there's a secondary mechanism as well, which is that PS is required for the mitochondria in the nerve cells to make energy. Uh, and and the, the better the mitochondria can make energy is the more efficient the nerve cell can be. So phosphatidylserine is part of the foundation of the functioning of mitochondria. Give us some take-home tips, some practical and actionable ways of incorporating phosphatidylserine into our life in a way that it will set up our brain to age at best possible. What would you recommend for someone who's interested in adding this supplement into their routine in terms of where to start, what dosage is relevant, and um, potentially is it something they would cycle? No matter what your age, you stand to benefit, whether it's in terms of improving your coping with stress in your everyday life at work or at home, or whether it's um, helping to cope with times when your mood is not as positive as it may be, um, whether it's helping to optimize your capacity for learning, um, helping to conserve your memory. For older people, um, PS offers a real chance to help to conserve, uh, not only to conserve their memory, but also to rebuild some of what they may have lost. Uh, so, in any adult of any age, there's a chance of benefit from PS. And I'm very happy about the ProHealth um, PS product because it's delivering 300 milligrams per serving, which is the full um, dose in most of the clinical trials. So, for somebody who is having memory issues, and for younger people who want to get the maximum benefit they can, I recommend those two capsules a day taken with food. Um, for people who are definitely having trouble uh, with their memory, I actually recommend taking four of the ProHealth phosphatidylserine capsules, which would supply them with 600 milligrams of phosphatidylserine per day taken with food. Uh, and that way, they have the best chance of getting benefit from phosphatidylserine. 